everyone. Welcome to Mads Makes Cheese. This is going to be my first video. I decided to make this channel because I just started making cheese and I thought that this YouTube channel would be a good way to both document my learning process so that I could look back on what I have done previously and improve upon it. And also, I thought it would be a fun way to share with people something that I'm having a lot of fun with. Um, so I hope that you will join me in this video and in future videos as I share my journey of learning to make cheese. In today's video, I'm going to be making a paneer cheese from a raw goat's milk that I purchased yesterday. Um, ideally, the type of milk you want to be using is as fresh as possible, but this milk has been frozen, and, but I am currently defrosting it, so it's not going to be as ideal as it could be, but we're just going to have fun and see where it goes. So I decided to make paneer today because it is one of the two types of cheeses that I can currently make without improvising. Um, the only ingredient that I have besides milk to make cheese with is citric acid. Um, I have ordered tartaric acid and a culture to start experimenting with, but for the time being, I can make ricotta and I can make paneer. So today, we're gonna make paneer. Um, we are just gonna see how that goes. So here I've collected all of my equipment and ingredients, which includes a water kettle because we're going to be heating up some water, a large pot with a thermometer attached to the side. The thermometer reads up to 220 degrees Fahrenheit, a bowl with a colander and what is supposed to be a cheesecloth lining it, but it turns out that I misplaced my cheesecloth and just kidding, I found more cheesecloth. I have citric acid in the measuring cup with a half teaspoon measuring spoon, my raw milk, and a large pot that I'm going to use as a makeshift cheese press. So the first step is going to be to heat the milk in the pot slowly up to 190 to 195 degrees Fahrenheit. So I'm just going to monitor this thermometer the entire time and as the milk gets hotter I'm just going to continuously stir it so that the milk at the bottom does not scald and stick to the bottom of my pot. Right now I turned the heat up to very high and I'm stirring it very quickly, probably until it reaches about 120. This is just an estimate, but we'll see how that goes. So this is some sped up footage of me stirring the pot. This is going to be a theme throughout this entire process. It is a lot of time of me stirring or watching or draining something and I eventually decide to stop recording this much. So the milk has now reached 120. So I turned the heat down to medium so that I don't have to stir as vigorously and I don't risk the milk scalding to the bottom of the pot. And now I'm going to continue heating it until it reaches 190 degrees.
So my milk has now reached 190 degrees. So I'm going to continue to hold it at this temperature for 20 to 30 minutes while messing with the temperature adjustment to make sure it stays constant. So I've now been holding the milk constant at 190 degrees-ish for half an hour. So I have turned the heat off and I'm gonna let it cool down to 170 degrees. Here I have one half teaspoon of citric acid and I'm now gonna add a half cup of water to it. And I'm just gonna check to see what temperature this water is at. Maybe give it a little mix to get the citric acid stirred in. All right, it's at 170, which is perfect. So we're just gonna leave that be and maybe give this an extra stir or two to help it cool down to temperature. And perfect. Now I'm going to slowly stir in this citric acid um, until the milk curdles and you will see the separation of the whey from the curds. I'm just stirring it gently to not disrupt the um, curd formation and make them really thin because I think that's what I'm supposed to do. And you might be able to see in the video, the milk is starting to separate a little and I can see some of the curds developing. I'm just gonna go ahead and remove the thermometer. I'll get a close-up shot of this. You can see that the curd has separated from the whey. And now I'm going to let this rest for 20 minutes before proceeding to the next step. During this time, I like to take my spoon and just kind of pull the curds towards the center. And the last time I tried this, I found that it helped them form into a more uniform mass. Um, this time it might not though, but we'll see. We'll see you guys in 20 minutes. So here I just decided to show you guys a little bit of what I was talking about, about how to get the curd into a unified mass. Also, after this point in the video, I stop recording the wait time or my stir time because I realized it was taking a lot of footage and it was wasting a lot of time. Right, so based on what the internet has told me, I think I might have added too much acid because it looks like the... um curds are sinking to the bottom instead of floating on the top. I can't confirm though. And here you and here you can kind of see it developing into a mass and sticking together, which looks pretty nice. Well to me at least. Okay, I'm just gonna add some salt now because I didn't last time and the paneer cheese tasted 
very bland and very much like this is milk that has been turned solid without much else. So we're gonna see if adding a little salt is helpful. Okay, and give that a little stir. I'm just gonna go around the edges to not disrupt this mass here. Oh yeah, you can see like a nice little mass is forming of sorts. So yeah, I'm just gonna give her a swirl, get some salt in there. I figure out later that this was a mistake and you will see why. Alrighty, so it has been 20 minutes that the curds have been resting, so now it's time to pour them into my cheesecloth. Okay, so now I'm just gonna take this and pour it into the cheesecloth. I think I'm technically supposed to be scooping these out with a saliva spoon, but I don't really care that much, so we're just doing it this way. Ooh, and there it goes. So here is the cheese poured into the cheesecloth. And now we can just leave this for a little bit and let it drain. Oh, and as a side note, I save my whey and I use it in smoothies and as a soup base. I eat a lot of soup and a lot of stew. So the whey is really nice to have just to give it a little something extra and make it taste a little more robust. So I'm going to go ahead and put that away and let this drain. Alrighty, I've been letting these drain for about half an hour, so I think it's time for me to start messing with it again and pressing the cheese. So what I'm going to do is just ah, let it fall and then pick up the corners and gently encourage the whey to drain by just squeezing it. You see it's coming right out. So the first time I tried making cheese, I didn't let it rest in the pot and I didn't let it sit and I didn't let the whey drain on its own. I just took it, immediately dumped it in the cheesecloth, and immediately started squeezing out all the liquid. And I find I found out that that's how you make very firm, very like rock solid curds. Um, so yeah, now I tend to wait longer so that the cheese turns out softer and a little bit sweeter because letting it rest helps it keep some of the lactose in there, which is milk sugar. Yeah, don't rush the process if you want softer cheese. I learned that one the hard way. Okay. So we're just gonna keep going at this and I'm gonna check it every so often to see how it's looking. Um, so you can see it's starting to drain a little bit better and I will just keep going at this until the curd is relatively dry and then we're going to move on to using my substitute cheese press.
Alrighty, so the cheese has gotten to the point where I'm putting a fair amount of pressure on it to make it drain and it has formed into a relatively cohesive mass. So I think we're gonna move on to the next step. Alrighty, so now that I have my cheese relatively well drained, I'm going to take it out of the colander and I'm um, gonna use this plate and try to form it into a nice round shape that is relatively tight. I guess you could call it a ball, but I don't want to twist it at the top like this to maintain the shape because last time I did, I got a cheese with a massive dent in the middle. So I'm going to see if I can't uh, get it to stay in the ball in a different way. So my idea now is to try and wrap it the same, but instead of having the extra cheesecloth on top of the ball like I did last time, I'm gonna leave it off to the side like so. relatively stable. I'm going to take the biggest pot I have, filled it with water, and we're going to balance it on top of this cheese. Now ideally the system would support itself, but that is not looking to be the case for today. So, I guess I'm just gonna stand here until the cheese gets a little bit firmer and a little bit more capable of supporting this pot. Uh, it says to wait 10 to 15 minutes depending on how firm you want your cheese, but I don't know how I feel about standing here for 15 minutes. I'm just gonna stop the video and come back after I am done with this. Alrighty, so I've been at this for like an hour and it's it's not happening. Um, it's not happening today. It's just going to be like a very soft cheese, but that's fine. I'm just going to go with it. Because I can't get the pot to stand up and I don't really want to wait any longer. So we're just going to unwrap it and let it roll. See if I can get some of it extra off. So at this point I'll add that I figured out why the cheese wouldn't drain and it is because I added the salt. The salt retains extra fluid and I would need additional weight and time in order to drain it out properly. So this is what I get for experimenting. This is it. This is supposed to be paneer cheese. Um, it looks like a very soft, undrained paneer cheese, but like, hey, you know, maybe if I just shake a little bit, we can pretend it's correct. It's so pretty and white and definitely a paneer cheese. Kind of, you know? I do suspect if I had let it drain for, you know, another several hours that it could have happened. But I just don't have that patience right now to stand with the pot 
supporting it. So yeah, that's not happening. everyone well thank you so much for joining me today um i hope you had fun watching this video and maybe i'll see you in a future video all right um that's all for now